Hello and welcome to another tutorial on using Play Canvas to create your own 3D games in the cloud. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to um, write code or write a script um, that will rotate or spin a 3D object in our game um, when keys are pressed on the keyboard. So just to start with, in this scene I have a camera, I have a directional light and I have a box which I'm going to use to, um, which I'm going to spin around. So um, if you don't have a 3D object, then just click on Add Entity and add something like a box or a um, cylinder or any shape like that. And make sure it's in the center of your screen and make sure your camera is pointing towards it so that it can see this object when you view the game or when you launch it. Okay, so I've got a box here. I need to write a script which will, um, which will basically control this box. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder. I'll double click on that. I already have a script in here from the last tutorial, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'll click on add asset and then script. And I'm going to call this script rotate.js. Okay. Make sure you add .js at the end. If you don't, Play Canvas will fill it in for you and then you'll have to hit enter again. But call it whatever you like. I'm calling mine rotate.js. Hit enter to save the name of your script. If you can't save a script name, then make sure you don't have any spaces in the script name. Okay, so it can't contain any spaces. Just one word or use underscores instead of spaces. All right, so I've got this script here. Um, what I need to do now is add it as a component to the box. So I'll click on box and then add component and script. And I can just drag this script on there to the script component section. All right, so now we have the rotate script attached to this box. If you have any other scripts already attached to your 3D object, then make sure you either remove them or disable that script so that it doesn't clash with this one, okay? So if it's using the same keys on the keyboard, then maybe just remove that script from this box, okay? You don't have to delete the script altogether, just remove it from the script asset for this box. Okay, so now I can double click on the rotate.js script to open up the code editor and we're going to start coding. All right, so for this, all of the code is going to be inside the update function. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this, a couple of ways that we can change the angle of um, an object using keyboard input. The first way I'm going to show you is. Um, it's easy, but it's the longer, harder way to do it. The second one I'm going to show you is the easier way, which will be much easier to um, change if you want to update the angle later on. Okay, and that's going to be done using variables. So let's just do it one way first. First thing that I'm going to do is add an if statement. Okay, to detect whether a key on the keyboard is being pressed. So I'm going to say if app dot keyboard dot is pressed okay so if app dot keyboard dot is pressed and then I need to specify which key I want to check for that's being pressed so I'll put PC dot and in this case it's going to be the left key in the keyboard so I'll add key underscore left okay then in curly brackets we can specify what will actually occur if this condition is met. So if the key, the left key on the keyboard is being pressed inside curly brackets. If you're getting errors and you're seeing little red exclamation marks and, or crosses on the side there, make sure you've completed your code. So make sure if you've opened any brackets that you've closed them. And that goes for the curly brackets as well for if statements and functions. So make sure you don't have extra brackets or you're missing brackets or semicolons and things like that. Otherwise you're gonna run into problems. Okay, so if the key, if the left key is being pressed on the keyboard, I basically want to rotate this object and um, spin it left, okay? So it's a little bit different to translate. To make something spin left, then we're going to um, work with the Y axis. So basically we'll put this dot entity. And to move an object last time we used translate or translate local. This time to rotate, I'm going to use rotate local. So this dot entity dot rotate local, and then 
inside the brackets, separated by commas, we specify the values for the x, y, and z axes. So I don't want it to move on the x or z axis, just the y axis. So I can put 0 for x. And then to start with, to make it spin left, when the left key is pressed, I'm going to um, use a negative number on the y-axis. So start with minus 2 to make it rotate slowly to the left or spin slowly to the left. Comma, and then lastly, 0 for the um, z-axis. Okay? Finish that line off with a semicolon. And basically, you can copy and paste this section. So select that if statement, paste it. And all you need to do is change it from pc.key left to pc.key right and make it a positive value for the y-axis there. Okay, so to sum it up, we have here basically checking if the left key on the keyboard is being pressed. If it is, if that condition evaluates to true, then we will rotate the object um, and it will be rotating minus two, value of minus two on the y-axis. Um, and then what we can say is if the key, if the right key is being pressed, then we can rotate it in a positive direction on the Y axis. So value of two. All right. Now I've actually put if here and if here as well. Another way of writing it is saying else if. Okay. So if we've got two different conditions that we want to check, all right. So we want to check this condition here, and if that's met, so if it evaluates to true, we'll do this. Otherwise, um, if we want to check this condition, if that one's not true, we'll check this condition, and if it's uh, this one's true, then we'll run this code here. So basically we're saying, if this is true, do this. Otherwise, if this is true, do this, okay? Um, so that's else if, okay? And you can have multiple else if statements, and then if none of those conditions are being met, then you can have a default statement, which is the else statement. And so you can have code running if um, none of these conditions are met. So maybe if none of the keys on the keyboard are being pressed, then um, something else will happen instead. Okay, um, so that looks good. I can save the code. Okay, so make sure it's saved. Go back to the editor and launch the game. And basically what we should see is the box in the middle of the scene. And when I press the left key on the keyboard, it rotates left, okay? When I let go, it stops. So if I hold it down, it keeps spinning. Otherwise I can just do individual key presses. And when I press the right key, it spins right, okay? So that's pretty easy. That's basically how you can rotate an object um, and use keyboard input at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is change it up a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm, rather than hard coding here how much it's going to rotate each time, I'm basically going to um, put the value into a variable at the start of this function. So if I want to make it rotate faster, I could change this to maybe something like minus 8 and this to 8. And then we could save that and refresh. Let's try that out. But if you want to keep updating these values, so there we go, it's a lot faster. If you want to keep updating these values, then you need to keep going back and changing both values here. We can make it a bit easier by just changing one value, okay, for the angle. So to do that inside the function, at the top of the function, I'm going to add some more code here. I'll add a comment here that's just saying um, set the angle to zero. Okay, and what we'll do here is create a new variable called angle. To do that in JavaScript, you use the var keyword and give your variable a name. And basically, a variable is something that can store information in the program. So it can store a value, whether it's a number or um, some text or something like that, and then it can be used over and over again in the program. Okay, so we're going to store the angle in a variable called angle and initially that's going to be set to zero so var to start creating a variable and then we're going to say the variable's name is angle 
and it's equal to a value of zero, an integer or a whole number. Okay. Now, what we'll do here is change the angle when the keys are being pressed. So what we can do is get rid of this here. And instead of saying this dot entity dot rotate local and then the X, Y, and Z values in there, basically what we can say is angle equals minus. So we'll go back to that other value we had before, minus two. So now the angle which was zero is now set to minus two. And then here inside this else if statement, we can change the angle to just two, a positive number. Okay. So if the left key is being pressed, angle becomes minus two. If the right key is being, oops, if the right key is being pressed, then the angle becomes two. Okay. But um, at the moment, Play Canvas won't know how what to actually do with this. So yes, the angle variable has been updated. But what do we do with that variable? Okay. And then, so that's what we need to add here. So after your else if statement, make some more space inside the update function. And basically we're going to, and I'll add a comment here. So two forward slashes on a line means you're adding a comment. So just some information to explain what's going on here in the code. And this line won't actually do anything. It won't um, run you won't see this text inside the game, but basically just adding a comment to explain what's going on here. So we're going to update the angle, oops, angle of the box to make it spin on the Y axis. Okay. Uh, and here we'll just add another comment here to explain what is going on in this section. So I'm changing the angle of the box when a key is pressed. Okay. All right. So after this comment here, we were saying update the angle of the box to make it spin on the Y axis. That's what we're going to do. So we're actually going to update the, um, angle, the angle or the rotation using that variable that we made before. Okay. So we put this dot entity dot rotate local, just like we did before in the if statement and the else if statement, but now we're adding it here at the end of the update function. So, it will always run at the end of the update function every time this function runs, which is every single frame during the game. And now we're going to set X to zero. Y, rather than saying a value like minus two or two, we're just going to put in the angle variable name and then comma and Z will be zero because we don't want to change its rotation on that axis. Okay, save that. So just to sum up what's basically going on here, it's all happening inside the update function. And basically, that's the update function there. Basically what's happening is we're creating a variable called angle, setting it initially to zero, or, and that will be zero every time this um, loop, or every time this function runs, which is every frame. But um, during the update function, which is running every frame, we'll check if the key so the left key on the keyboard is being pressed. If it is, we'll change angle to minus two. Otherwise, if the right key is being pressed, then we'll change angle to two. And then we update the angle of the box here by saying this dot entity dot rotate local, and then specifying that angle value variable name there for the Y axis. Okay, we'll save that. We can refresh the launch window of the game or just relaunch it from the editor. And it should really work in the same way. Okay, so it rotates left, and it rotates or spins right. But now instead of hard coding the values inside the if statements, we can just have the angle variable here set. And then we can change the angle for um, the um, positive direction here on the y-axis and the positive direction here, on the, uh, the negative direction here on the Y axis. So we can change the variables there where it's angle, where it says angle, but it's just a lot easier now to manage the code. So we know what angle means. We know what that does. So if we need to change the angle value, we can just change it in the angle variable there. Okay. Rather than having to look for the X, Y, and Z values in here. That's basically it for this tutorial. So a couple of things we covered is 
rotating an object using keyboard input. And the second thing we covered was how to create variables. Thanks for watching.